got Cream on the blue, we've got Clash on the red, and they are blazing across. Talanis, Timi, Florentino, and Elsu taken off right away. The basic bans removed, but both by Clash. Cream Esports instead take advantage of this draft phase to target ban things that have looked good. Sky's Talanas, Mowgli, oh, oh, and look at Random that. on Roxy. We talked about it so much, and then right off the bat, <laughs> it just gets taken off the board. That is a research-oriented ban away by Cream, and a smart one to do at that. I'm just upset that you called me a basic ban, TJ. I don't know. Hey! Don't even know where to go with that, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> the Ovid will join the basic bands. And that means that options are a little bit more limited for the side lane available for Hot. Also have to remember. I can't that... take this seriously. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, Lindus is available. We've got Sephira that's available as well as Richter. Great opportunities. And just as I say that, they are gonna look like oh. lock in both of them. Very strong one-two by Clash. Remember, this is the EU region. So Lindus has been nearly 100% banned prior to this week. Nearly 100% win rate. Right. And the fact that she went through means that this was very calculated by both teams, making sure they don't ban out the super overpowered heroes. That allows Clash to get both Sephira and Richter. You want to add some early game pressure into it as well. Ryoma gets added to the mix for Cream. Annette in the support position as well. And now it looks to be a hover over that beautiful no, Chuck. No, He's no, locked. No. He's ready. Mowgli's back in the jungle. He's not hanging with the bears. It's in dead. He's going to be with the elephant himself. How do you protect to York with those uh. But deep rest, D2. Deep rest. Uh. There's the ultimate <sighs> dive onto that Yord approaching. It's Superman. It's Flash. It's Ryoma. Uh, a little bit of swap to the Tulum. Okay. Coming through. That means there's going to be so much extra dive available for this Yorn. I think Clash may have just stepped in a little bit of trouble. And look at the power in the early game that Cream has on their uh, on their on their cards as well. Cream, we've seen they do show signs of life when they're aggressive because they have the talented mechanical skills on the players on their roster. However, the difficulty has been into the macro and finding how to transition that advantage. But if there's ever a way to get that advantage guaranteed, it's the five heroes that Cream has decided to choose. Alex P on Tulum is terrifying. My question mark is Frost, because historically that's kind of been the duo. Mm -hmm. Alex P comes through in the front of the fights, Frost is on the flank with the melee jungle. He's now on the Lindus, perhaps the only ranged jungle that's still considered viable. And that's good, because it does mean that we'll see a lot of damage, and the Lindus, like I said, has been incredibly effective. But it takes away the punish part of the Alex P. Frost duo. But I don't think it's necessarily detrimental if they get the fights in the correct areas. If Lindus is able to get that speed boost, if she's able to be that kiting monster that we've seen her be in times past, mixing in combination with a Superman and a Ryoma, it could create some opportunities for them. But I want to spend the time flipping it on the other side, though. We can get into that in... We can get into that in just a second. Let's go over this clash. Wonder Woman was the final lock-in. Chognar, I, is it comfort? Okay. This I'm man gonna... has been dead inside for the last minute. I, yeah. <laughs> I just let you guys talk about it because I've been upset. <laughs> there's there's multiple things about both these drafts that I really hate, starting with the Chognar, but also I'm looking at the Tulin. Why did they pick a Tulin and Zephra? It never works. You see Tulin at the end of the game, he always has like 35% damage. You're like, he did great. Never killed the Zephra, ever. So. I had that same question, Mark. You could probably hear it in my voice. They swapped from Flash to Tulin, and I was like, that doesn't quite make sense. And then I remembered it's Alex P. He's like the he's Tulin. But he's stubborn. It's, it's just a stubborn comfort pick yeah, when you pick the Tulin. and so are people that hate Chognar to, like, the burning passion of a thousand suns. But we still live with them on the desk anyway, and that's okay because we actually hey, care. My my tournament's, like, standings are not on the line here as Tulin does, like, 80,000 bajillion damage, but then still loses because they can never kill a Sephira. That said, if they can really work together in these team fights, they have multiple heroes that can dive. You're talking about the Superman, the Oma, and the Tulin. Maybe they can bait out Tide of Life and then get in and then kill her. Because I, I know I'm putting so many eggs in the Zephyr basket, but if she stays alive, she heals her entire team. She has so much poke damage that you just lose. But I think the point that you make is going to be the biggest telltale of whether or not Clash finds success. It's going to be the maybe, because teamwork needs it to be the forefront of their mind. Match number two for the European region. Game number one has begun. Cream Esports, Clash Spain. Gentlemen, it's your call. In order to make the dream work, Cream are going to have to make the team work. And they're already in a little bit of trouble. Sky stepping into the jungle and Mowgli oh, oh, will steal oh. away a bite golem. That is so sloppy. Okay, thanks. 
Thanks for uh, making me look bad, Mowgli, but also making Cream look bad, because what was that? Fear the elephant <sighs> as he chases Alex P all the way back. First blood to Chopnar, it might be two. Frost oh. is still on the run. Zepta gets the credit. Uh, nothing is scarier than a Chognar with a might buff. I learned today, TJ. ILT? Sorry, TIL maybe. Are you thinking up new internet acronyms? Uh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. That is illegal. So, reevaluate your position on Chognar. If he starts <laughs> that well, do you believe? <laughs> There's. Okay. Yes, Chagnar is the only support for that could do that, right? He's the only support that can do an energy surge from that far away and steal the buff. But that was just sloppy. I mean, come on, you literally have Punish on your team to be able to take that out. What in the world? That definitely hurt Cream's early jungle farm, but they'll keep it close, though they're at a 1,000 gold lead or gold <sighs> deficit currently. They're not too far behind. 1,000 gold is only a lot in the early game. It, it, that's what I was about to say. In the early game, a thousand gold is certainly a lot, especially because that can snowball very quickly as all the objectives are there for the taking for your opponent. Cream will have to be aware of that drifting back as Mowgli continues to bully them. The new backs off. I, I, I gotta say it's very easy to bully when you have a level lead and hey, lots of gold on your side. Annette into Chognar. Annette's not a big fan. It really isn't, and Nadu might just die here because of it. Sephora there for the damage. The shockwave will chip away at the noob's HP. In the meantime, Alex P needs to get out as Sky's done decent damage. And this is looking very difficult for Cream. It's very difficult when you fall behind TJ. That is certainly correct. They're down in levels. They're down in gold. And look to this. Look for this to get even worse unless they're able to just find a pick somewhere along the line. I may be misreading it, but I believe that we just saw Frost bait out the Spirit Sentinel for Hot to pick up. Um, if we could view either of those characters, we'd be able to find out, but uh, they intentionally are putting a lot of emphasis on the hot, I think. I didn't quite catch that, but that could be something they want to do in order to be able to keep up with the Richter on that side lane, uh, especially because Frost can get a lot of gold in the rest of the jungle, but that's typically not what teams want to do. They want to get their Lindus as farmed up as humanly possible in the early game. <laughs> Why I was drawing attention to it, Mowgli doesn't feel any th threat here. And actually, Frost will be in trouble. He'll have to die back within range of both the Tide of Life and Hunter's Mark, but they survive. Now, oh. Hawk arrives. Hello, it's Superman, and it's here to ruin your day. Ratnam just keeps getting scooped further and further into the Cream Esports lines. He's the first kill for their side. He's talking about the matchup up top, and Hot says, here's the matchup. I'm going to bring it to the entire team. That push onto all of them was absolutely beautiful. Allowed them to take that fight, TJ. They need to do that multiple times in order to make this forward, make this work going forward. Hurricane Wolf and the noob just to stall out, give Frost and Talented time to get this uh, tower, and they will get it. Nicely done. Mowgli can't get here in time. You know, as aggressive as Mowgli's trying to be on this Chognar, he's really not setting up till kills for his team. All he's doing is slowing and damaging them. And I know I'm not the biggest Chognar fan, but I'm just pointing out that he's not being able to really capitalize on the lead that, that their team has gotten. And it, it, that's why it took so long for them to actually engage in that fight, and then Hot was able to go there and punish. All right, but I am an elephant boy, and I'd like to point out how many fights Mowgli is able to stand in the front lines of and shift the focus away from his major uh, damage dealers. Right, but I didn't la work in the last fight, though. Did work here. A missile goes over to Clash. Now we'll see if it works in the real fight. As Random goes in, the bracelet stun is very good, but Zept is in trouble. Tides of life only keep him up for a while, while Random is again scooped up by Hot, who returns to the brawl. That's no HP on Redemption as well. Alex P did fall elsewhere, but that is small, small parlance for Cream. TJ, I hate to break it to you, but Mowgli was fighting Talented the entire time and lost that fight. Sky, are you sure? I, I don't think he's very sure. That is a great play by the new, by the way. But getting back to my point, TJ, I got to have my point in. Mowgli was fighting Talented the entire time. He was trying to take him out of the fight. He took lots of damage, and his team died behind him because there was no support. And now the gold is tied, and now Cream are back into it despite that disastrous start that they had. I would like to point out Daniel is literally banging the desk in his campaign against Chognar. <laughs> D2 against Chogner 2020. Nice. 
I'm not gonna buy your campaign posters, but I'm happy that you're taking civic service seriously. <laughs> I do what I can. Zefta, Mowgli, and Redemption all hovering in mid against the three-man squad of Cream. No flanks to come in for a while. Of course, the power of Hot on the Superman is how quickly he can rotate across the map. Mowgli using that Chaos Protection is not going to do his team any favors if he doesn't have it in this upcoming team fight against something like Hot coming in with a speeding bullet or Talented coming in with Wailing Blade. Hot's been quietly working away on the tower in the meantime. Does find significant success before Mowgli chases him off. So Hot has actually ro rotated to this bottom lane to continue to put pressure on. That allows for the rest of his team to be able to put pressure in the top lane because of that flip in the members there. So uh, look for teams as they take towers to flip the rotations of their side laners so that they can get maximum towers in the front line. They'll actually start uh, carrying Frost up to the top lane, making sure that Frost gets some of that lane gold so they can power farm the Lindus. Right, and that is very imperative for them to do to, in order to make sure that Frost has that gold on his side so he can continue to do all that damage. Mid, Zafta goes in, Tides of Life knocking the noob low, but the noob did buy an escape. Oh. Now Hot tries to scoop Sky out. Sky's got a flicker to safety, and now Random will brawl. Bracelets, it's perfect. Hot gone. Talented's on the run, but Random manages to lasso right back in. And the noobs overstayed his welcome. He'll run around in circles. He <laughs> makes Random out and survives the lasso. Random and Mowgli finally managed to take him down, but that was disgusting. He ran around in circles, but if he just kept running in the straight line afterward, he would have gotten out TJ. That fatal mistake of running back into his own side for the towers was his death. And I don't know what I would just watch, but at the uh, end of it, Clash do walk away taking a tower. They'll get an abyssal as well. That's a significant boon to their side. We've seen this theme play out in other regions, CJ, specifically Lat Am, where the team that aggresses is actually the team that loses these team fights. Cream oh. Save. oh! That was a really long ranged yeah. arrow from Redemption. He used the heart shot to finish that kill. Yeah, and Hot is continuing to be a little bit over aggressive here. Obviously, that early aggression helped get back into the match, but he can't take on three, much like he couldn't take on that fight earlier. Once they couldn't get the kill on Sky in that, that big brawl, they should have backed off, and Cream are having a hard time backing off some of these team fights. Frost, I'd like to point out, has been in jungle, has a better KDA, and is still losing in gold to Redemption, who has just been sitting in the bot lane for much of the game, getting power farmed. Right, and that's what they're trying to get done in order to make sure that Redemption has that farm to his name, and Obviously, you know, Redemption moving from that jungle role to the Abyssal lane has really started to help out the side of Clash because he's so adept at getting the power farm on the side. Sky will get pushed away with his Hunter's Mark. Frost, I think, needs to be leveraged a little bit more aggressively. That's what Cream are trying to do. Power farm Frost put a lot of their hopes on him. Now he needs to start contributing to fights. Well, once he gets the Clavisongte, which I believe he's building into, he will have that damage. And once he has a damage, he can be very aggressive, TJ, running through the bushes and just burning people down. Right now, he doesn't really have that ability. Random will be chased back. Good wind cuffs keeps him close, though. Wailing Blade does tack through. Zephyr's pushed back by an excellent hurricane wall as well. The noob absolutely dominating these fights. Yeah, the combination of the noob with those hurricane, uh, excuse me, the wind cuffs and Alex P getting that damage in with the ion blast is doing so much work for them. But it's hot. Uh, he's, he's always getting in trouble like this, TJ. He does seem to always manage to get himself out. And this time, though, it might have spelled greater trouble for Clash. Oh, Frost does manage to get that Dark Slayer. I had flashbacks. <laughs> no mistakes this time. This is more important than a Mike Golem in the early Sky, game. Sky, the flicker, you mad man. There's no way he gets out, but I respect it all the same. <laughs> that was why the developers changed it so the high ground towers slow down Heroes DJ to, to stop madness like that from ever happening again. That was beautiful. He didn't care. He just kept <laughs> going. <laughs> You're mine now. That was actually really intimidating. Sky manages to do a lot of damage. Uh, I'm not sure a 1 1 trade against Todd is worth it, but maybe into the buff they picked up it is. Mowgli will be able to chase the rest of Green back because despite winning that Dark Slayer, they don't have the members on the board to really get aggressive. Right, Cream Esports is really going to have to make sure they take advantage of the Dark Slayer, like you mentioned, and start to take down these towers, or else it's all for naught. Top tower did just fall, picked up by Talented. Perhaps a little bit more in the favor of Cream as the noob's in trouble. 
Ott's looking for a way to get him out and scoops Mowgli underneath the tower, but oh. the new needs to hurricane wall to dodge the water wall that seemed to be honing in on his position. And nearly died to that as well. Brando with the bracelets has overextended. Oh. Frost will survive. Nicely done by Alex P to save his team's hard carrying. Now Zephyr's Tide of Life is burnt to survive damage from Hot, who's still lingering in the area. Oh my goodness, these teams love to brawl, just getting in and out of these fights. I want to go back to what started all of those fights with New running away and nearly tying to a hard top. Both these teams are on point with their team fights. Maybe not the macro, though. The club Sancti you were talking about has now been built by Frost, meaning that he's going to do devastating damage, as you can see. Right, and he's building the Omni Arms, which means that every time he uses the Lunar Champion, he gets more damage. Spectral Iron, Mowgli has the invulnerability. Chaos Protector keeps him safe, and he's doing a lot of damage. Joined by Redemption, he keeps him alive a terrifyingly no long time. Redemption, he's just trading what? life still. He gets a second. The noob's gone. Zept is in. Finally, Redemption's gone, but it does not matter because Random has joined the fight. Hot, talented, the noob, they're all gone. Mowgli survived it all. Frost commits to the middle of the team. He too will fall. Alex P is the only player standing. TJ, I didn't know Yorn had an ability called Immortal, where he stands there and fights for forever. The combination of the Desticle and the Poa Slaughter was absolutely ridiculous. He would not die. And the Essence of the Wind and the good body blocking from Mowgli. Yes. Let it be known that Chalkdar was imperative hey. to that success. What was it, though? <laughs> was it? Was it really? I think you're an elephant downer. <laughs> Yeah, I might I, I be, might be an elephantist, or maybe not elephant. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'll stop. You should workshop that yeah, one. I'll, yeah, I'll work on that for next time. Nice. The enraged abyssal dragon will be up for grabs as it leaves the pen. Destroyed. Flash. Hey, wait. What's going on here? <laughs> Arrive on scene. Through all of this, yeah. all of this nonsense, mm -hmm. even gold, relatively close towers. It's five to six, and. No objective to either side. Uh, is is EU the new ladder? What's going on? Well, we've had two games today that have revolved around teams just knowing each other too well, I think. Right. Like, this was true of our first game of the night, and I think it's true again here. Both these teams just know what to expect from the other. Oh, oh. my goodness, Frost, you're doing damage. Oh, Random yes, yes. wants to brave it, diving in. He's just yep. carried back, instantly picked up by the whole team. This now gets dangerous. They're, they can't really take these fights if they're going to get poked down like that. They can't take a fight without Zepta either because he need that healing from his side from that title life as well. And the poke is coming out in earnest here from Cream now. Sky did split push quite successfully, though. They'll have to send Hot up to deal with that. That means for a moment there's a 4v4 guaranteed in mid. Marsh can't use it to save the tower, though. I want to take a look at Red because he's continuing to do ridiculous damage from the back. He has built that Muramasa, so anyone who wants to come up to him, a frontliner, will get chunked down as well. No one is safe. Miramasa, of course, giving you percentage-based damage. 45% pierce, armor pierce onto anyone. That means it's, it really burns through heroes who stack their armor, much more than something like a rank breaker, which only does raw pierce damage. So, oftentimes, frontline tanks are the most punished by it. Sky up top. Oh, that was nice, Flicker. He'll get on the Frost. The Hurricane Wall tries to save him. Jungle Strike going wide is the only thing that keeps Frost up. And even then, it takes a moment for him to grab the kill. Sky does go down on the split push. There's also a Desticle charge used there. That's about 75 seconds before that's up again. So it's going to be more difficult for Sky to engage after this. Mowgli has to spend Chaos Protection to get out. Even then, he might not. He'll spend the Essence of the Wind as well. Random's re-engaged, oh. though. And again, he's gone over-aggressive. Zepta's the next in trouble. Frost oh. just dives him. Tide of Life must be spent to survive. Frost has come alive. He has so much damage now, TJ. A full build if you look at that. All six items up, and all the members of Clash down if they fight. Mowgli feeling the frostbite underneath tower. We'll have to draw back as the high ground does fall. <laughs> Absolutely does. And that is why you build attack speed on there as well. Lunar Champion cannot hit towers, TJ. So that's why you build attack, attack speed, excuse me, so that these towers can fall like dominoes. Dark Slayer up for grabs. Cream Esports will get it guaranteed. They absolutely will. Unless a heart shot comes along, that's the only way for a steal to come. And not in time here for Red Redemption. Obviously, has no scouting on it, so no way to know when to fire that off. This is now rough for Clash, and Cream might be about to make a statement guaranteeing they're here with the rest of the top EU contenders. 
maybe look at a path back into the top four. Right, Creamer looking great here. Clash does have a way back into this game, though. They're not too far behind on goal, which means if they take a team fight in earnest, don't take too much to poke coming into it, then they can really t make something happen, especially with Redemption providing the damage from that backside and Zep debating. Random again, caught out a little bit, but this time Sky's there is punished. Look at Alex P knocks very low. Hot does keep him at bay though. That's very good. The Hurricane oh. Wolf for the noob keeps his team alive. Sky in the meantime will fall. Alex P is able to pick it up. It's only Sky down as Talented and Hot both narrowly survive the engagement against Redemption's arrows. That was so sad there for Clash. Sky stayed alive for so long, TG taking so much damage for his team while dealing out so much damage to the other side. And yet it was all for not as zero members fall. They need to take advantage of when Sky gets in there. They need to do much more than take advantage at this rate. Flasher in serious trouble. <laughs> <laughs> they absolutely are. They're about to get creamed. I'm sorry, was that low nice. hanging? Was that low yeah, hanging fruit? No, I like halfway through the dice. I was like, was it? Sorry, I don't, right. I don't write my puns down on a piece of paper like you do. <laughs> That's over. The lasso <laughs> will land. Clash do have a full five stack up to defend as the high ground tower is approached on. Here's the Drake. No minion wave with it. Redemption can oh. just junk it down. Yeah, yes. This might actually be disastrous if Green can't get in. Tower's at half HP. There's Redemption. Another flurry. It's gone. Bottom tower? Bottom tower is under threat. Frost check oh. back. Random. The lasso. Talented's let it go on too long. Frost is back. Thanks to the blade of oh. eternity. He's pulled back in underneath the tower for a second time. Oh my. That was so beautiful there. Random twice in a row with the lasso pulls it made. By the way, that was great rebuying from Frost as well. He instantly sold the blade of eternity, got the desicle, but still he ended up dying because of the great play there from Random and Zefta. You're staying beneath this tower. Now Clash are able to surge forward for the first time in this game. They've got a full wave in mid, and Redemption is blowing up towers. Hot will try and interfere, but he stayed too long. The stuns are there. He's barely able to get out. If Kramer are not careful, this could be a game here for a Clash if they push in because they need the damage there from Frost. They did have enough wave clear to slow down the game. Missing Frost, though, like you say, absolute disaster for the team. He is going to be back up in time to contest this Abyssal Dragon if he hikes his way all the way over right when he respawns. They actually, Cream had to had to stop, or Clash had to stop their offensive in order to deal with Super Minion Wave mm. from that uh, top lane that Cream opened up earlier. Uh-oh. Hot. Are you safe? The rest of the team's here to try and save him. There's the Chaos Protection spent. Hot does get to safety. Mowgli's a little bit separated. Oh, and the Noob oh, dives oh. in. The Hurricane Wall! It is perfect. Sky's down. He'll be black with the Blade of Eternity. But Mowgli, Redemption, and Zephyr all will not. They're gone permanently. And Sky just has to run for his life. Oh, can Sky keep this up? I don't believe he can. The flicker, Frost, though. the focus, it almost works. Oh, almost had it, but oh my, oh my goodness. The noob, TJ, the noob. He goes in there, he flicker hurricane walls in to push the entire team back. I have never seen that happen. It is legitimately time for him to change his name to the pro. <laughs> it may be time here, but it's time for Cream to win game one. Random with the desperate hold will go in 1v5, and he's not able to make it happen. 13 seconds on the respawns, and this means the green esports are able to stake their claim on the EU scene with a game one victory over Clash AOV. A statement by Cream taking that game, but taking out Clash. What beautiful play by them, and they're inching their way towards that 500 mark.